here at Clark LeClaire Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, affectionately known as the Jungle. Charlotte and Maryland, they played on Friday. A three-run win for Charlotte. So back at it again today in an elimination game. Here's what Charlotte will do in terms of their lineup. David McCabe had a big game on Friday, a couple of home runs. He's really been the spark plug at the, with this team. And Austin Knight has been quiet. So they're going to really lean on Knight to break through. And if he can, I mean, this is a team that's already banged out 18 runs and 24 hits without really the services of Knight. So they're going to really look to him to break out. And if he does, it'll be good news for Charlotte. On the hill. Ryan Ramsey going to get the start for Maryland. What do we know about him, Danon? Ryan Ramsey, what he brings to the table is 90, low 90s fastball, but he has some high vertical ride. So when I see that 88, 89 to 92 fastball trouble up and down, it's the vertical high ride of his fastball. Left center field. Troy Streffler moving over to make the catch. One away. The freshman stepping up, and we've seen that be a common theme. Young guys, young talent coming to play on this stage. Streffler moved to his left for out number one, to his right rather now to his left. Back in Greenville, Maryland with nine home runs in this regional in the first two games. They hit seven yesterday, and as you look at Benjamin Cowles on deck, He's the number two hitter in this lineup. He had one that's 18 on the season and yesterday. Matt Brooks on the hill for Charlotte today. What should we expect from this young man? Well, the junior right-hander, not going to be truly overpowering, 88 to 92 with his fastball, but he's a cerebral approach. And what No strikes. The Maryland's leadoff hitter today. Shaw bounces it to short. Drag him up with it. Go in the first. One away. Ednar is a stolen base threat at first base. To right field and fairly deep. To the track, Groover camps underneath it and makes the squeeze. Both pitchers off to good starts. Right-handed batters. High off the bat of Dragon. Costas trying to shade the sun. Called off now by Shaw. That is the right play to make and Shaw puts it away and Puts away the threat from the Niners. Right to shortstop Dragon. Went away. Nice pitch from Brooks to get him. And they got him picked. Elwood's in a run down. He'll be tagged out. Good move by Ramsey. To left center field. This one fairly deep. Elwood to the track, and he makes the catch. Just leaning back up against the wall. You got Dragum over there on the other side of the bag. The shortstop on the second base side. Strike three. In the air to center, fairly deep, but Elwood back, camps under it. Another fly ball out, and another quick inning. One, two, three for Brooks. We're through three. It's a pitcher's duel here in this elimination game. Well for each of them. A lot of fly ball outs, 12 fly ball outs combined. Seven of them to center field. Knight to left field. This one's hit well, and the ballpark won't hold it. The Niners have been waiting for Austin Knight to break out, and he does so in a big way here in the fourth. Charlotte's on board. Good. Just some batters that you have to be extremely careful with, starting off with a fastball, and Ramsey grooves a fastball in the intermittent part of the plate. Austin Knight goes down and gets it, came into this regional leading the team, leading the country in doubles and RBI. And he gets him on the board for the first run of the game. Oh, 
Right to third base. Gardner with a nice stab. Over to Costas. Two away. Right up the middle. And it gets through for a base hit for Cowles. He was with Gorman Thomas. He looked like a, a wreck yes. out there in center field. <laughs> Looped right to shortstop, and Dragum is there. Pitches working both sides of the plate. Not getting the same kind of quality swings as we've seen from the Terpins. There's one. It'll be a base hit. Cowell stops at second. Maryland putting together a two-out thread here in the bottom half of the fourth. Arms in the bullpen are ready. Stop. Stop any kind of damage. Great pitch up in the zone from Brooks. Pirates try to advance to their third Super Regional in the last four years. And McKeithen, solid to left field all the way to the wall. But Flynn is there to keep it in the park. And it's a long out for McKeithen. Much more than we are, but... Like 0-2 count, he's still pounding his own. He's not trying to give anything for free. Gets Elwood looking on the outside corner. Five strong innings on the mound. That's when you got to be waiting fastball. Now the bunt down the third baseline. It is a beauty. They're going to have a hard time getting Flynn, and they don't. Now the runner goes to third. And he'll be tagged out. What a great play by catcher Aaron McKeithen to get all the way to the bag at third base to accept that throw. Situational baseball practice. This is where you can tell that Coach Rob Woodard does an outstanding job preparing his players. The bunt down the third base line. You can see McKeithen. He's coming out. He's thinking maybe he has to field that bunt, but he recognizes nobody is guarding. Nobody's covering third base. Outstanding job there. That looked like a close tag as well. Fourth batter of the inning. Check that. It's Matthew Shaw. And he gets him swinging. So Brooks gets out of another jam. He's got the two flyouts, but... He does a nice job in the batter's box making pitchers work. Fist this one out to center field. Diving attempt made by Schreffler, and he just can't come up with it. Johnson's got good speed, so he'll trot into second base with a leadoff double. Run, and here gets a double hit off him and quickly comes back with two straight strikes. Three straight. Gets McCabe swinging. Clean up spot and a team that can hit. Bounces this one to the pitcher. Ramsey will turn and throw to first. Costas digs it. And Ramsey gives up a leadoff double, but again gets out of a jam. Plus to East Carolina. 26 runs scored by Maryland and none today. Cowles sends this one high to center field. To the wall. And Elwood is there to make the catch. It's flags for every game. The wind is a little stronger now. And I think it's been all weekend. Bednar puts a charge into this one to straightaway center field. And yet, warning track power. Hmm. Base hit. Will Butcher picks up his first hit of the day, and Charlotte has their leadoff man on board. Love the creativity of rally caps. You never know which one works. Runner goes. A steal. A little bit of a delayed steal, and Shaw couldn't hang on. I thought he might have been out if Shaw would have been able to hang on to that delivery from Vote. Games, you don't have a, you don't have those opportunities to put him in. Keith and watches strike three go by him. Ramsey came inside for the second strike and then outside to get McKeith and looking, and that's a big strikeout. Two balls and a strike to drag him. A little number to second base. Shaw tracks it down, throws drag him out, and Ramsey gets out of it again. Mm -hmm. Merrill, now they got to score some runs if they want to stay alive in this Greenville regional. They're We've seen Geesting 54 closest to us. 
Pitching already, and Lindsay's up. As Brooks gets the Marlax swinging. The run started to get produced by East Carolina, so leave your starter in if he's working. And it is. Another one, two, three inning for Matt Brooks. The start of a lifetime for him. The Charlotte fans here in Greenville standing ovation. Blows that fastball right by McCabe. And a big second out. To left field. Now coming in is Flynn and makes the play. Ryan Ramsey has given his team every opportunity in this game. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Now he needs his best to come alive. Charlotte, Groover's moved to second. We've seen that before. And Keuchel out in right field now. Off the pitcher's mound, and he'll get into center field. Schreffler doing his job with his team down a run, getting on here in the bottom of the eighth. In the plate, get the runner at third base, but he got his job done dropping that bunt down. And this one is off the glove of McKeithen. So Schreffler will head down to second base. And McKeithen may be wanting to know why that wasn't called a foul tip. Flint gets the bunt down. Another nice job down the third baseline. And he can't be dug out at first by McCabe. So Flint not only gets the runner over to third base, but now as the go-ahead run is on first base himself. Thinking maybe Shaw might drop down a, a bunt to plate that tying run. Shaw up the middle. Could be two. To second for one over to first. Got him! And the tying run does come across to score. But Charlotte may have gotten themselves out of a big inning. At least give your best, and both of these guys did so in exemplary fashion. Three walks to two walks. Not many mistakes. One earned run by each of them. And here we're tied up in the ninth. Mm. Runner goes. Hit to left field and a base hit. Groover tripped on the bag, it looked, when he got to second base. I don't know if he'd be able to get to third anyway with that ball hit pretty hard to left field, but Bush and he wears work gloves. Look at those yellow work gloves. <laughs> Worn work gloves. Up to the plate. Now a throw back behind the runner at second base, and they got Groover. What a heads up play by Justin Vogt behind the plate. Groover just snuck a little too far off second base, and they threw him out. The heads of these coaches continues. Michael Lowe, strike three. To right field, no, snagged at second base by Shaw. Shaw had him played perfectly, climbed the ladder, and took a base hit away from Drago. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Zollner's fired up. Shaw making the play. Can the Maryland Pats respond in kind? Don't get happy feet in the batter's box. Getting hit by a pitch. And help you in this situation. So will the base hit. Sends this one to right field. Maryland has their leadoff man on board here in the bottom of the ninth. going to get down. In the left field, Bednar will head to third base. Now the throw comes and Bednar with aggressive base running is safe. So Same Maryland has had three walk-off wins. They've had three walk-off wins today. They've all been on walk-off walks. So they may get one here and vote the catcher steps in. Sends this one to the outfield, and that's going to do it. Votes base hit wins it for Maryland. The Terps stay alive. They'll play ECU in the regional final tonight.
Great job seizing the opportunity. Justin Vogt hadn't had a hot day at the plate, but all you need to do is poke it into the outfield. And the celebration begins for the Terrapins, coming back up through the elimination bracket to meet East Carolina in a championship later today. Man. Vote makes the defensive play of the game in the top half of the inning by throwing out a base runner at second base. And then he gets the biggest hit of his career, as far as I know, in a Maryland Terrapin uniform to drive home the winning run today in the elimination game. Maryland stays alive. They beat Norfolk State, and they beat Charlotte in elimination games 